Good morning, good morning. I'd like to welcome you to the St. James Cumberland Presbyterian Church in America, the live stream of our Sunday school on today, February the 27th in the year 2022, which is the fourth Sunday in February. Amen. On last Sunday, I said it was the fourth Sunday, which was the third Sunday. Amen. We certainly welcome you to our uh, live stream of our ministry. We thank you so much for tuning in with us and being a part of our uh, ministry. We bid you welcome, whether, uh, whether you're living here in the city of Decatur, the state of Alabama, uh, anywhere in the United States of America, or wherever you are on the planet, again, we bid you welcome. As we go into our lesson today, we understand and we all know that we must have our Lord and Savior uh, leading and guiding us. We must have God's Holy Spirit touching each and every one of our hearts, and we must have God Almighty who is leading and directing everything for all of us to be on that one accord where we may get what God would have us to get out of our lesson today. And we're going to ask him for his blessings on our lesson today and that he can get the word out to us and that we can then be the good soil, that we can then bring forth much fruit. Amen. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you. God, as we are assembled here at various places, Lord, at various times, but we are so glad that we serve a God that is not bound by physicalness, not bound by time, that wherever we are and wherever we go through our lesson, Lord, you are there. You are there, and you are one in the midst. Lord, as your word teaches us, your word teaches us that wherever two or three are gathered, you said you would be one in the midst. So, Lord, as we are going through your holy word, Lord, help us to learn from the lesson. Help us to be able to apply the lesson, and then help us to be able to live the lesson. Lord, help us to be about your business, Lord, which is about trying to live a life that, Lord, that others may come up and ask us, what must I do to be saved? Lord, help all of us to be ministers. Help all of us to do the right things at the right time so that we can give you all the honor and all the glory, that we can be a reflection of the light which is light which shines and lives within us. God, we have some sick among us. Lord, you know everything. God, we, we, we just beseech you, Master, to please touch and heal as only you can. God, we're so thankful for what you've already been doing. God, we thank you that you've been taken care of. When the doctors have shaken their head, God, you have been kind. God, you have been merciful that you have allowed days to roll on longer. And God, we say thank you for it. God, we have some bereavement among us. God, we're just clay vessels, Lord. It hurts when we move, when you move, Lord. But as you move, God, allow us, and Lord, strengthen us that we can accept and that we can do the things that you will still have us to do. Lord, we know that you will not put more on us than we can bear for as we are studying the lesson of Job. God, we understand, and God, we're asking you to please, Lord, 
Help us to be about your business. And God, comfort the brokenhearted. Lord, we see all the things that's going on with on, the, on the planet. Lord, touch. Lord, comfort as only you can. God, you told us that there will be wars and rumors of wars. God, we see what's going on on the other parts of the planet. Lord, help. God, help as only you can. God, touch hearts and change them from stony hearts to hearts of flesh. But God, you know what's best, and God, you know what you're doing. But man can do nothing without you allowing it. So God, help us, and Lord, have mercy on us as a nation. Have mercy on us as a planet. Have mercy on us as people. For, Lord, we know that, God, you've given us dominion over the planet. And, God, help us to do the right things. God, this and many of the blessings we ask in your son, Jesus the Christ's name. Amen. Amen. As we look at our lesson today, and as we're going into it, the title of our lesson today is Serving a Just God. Serving a just God. Now, our Bible background is Job chapter 42. Our printed text is Job 42, verses 1 through 6, and verses 10 through 17. The aim for change. By the end of this lesson, we will understand the necessity of being humble before God. Appreciate, appreciate how God listens to our thoughts and responds with justice and help others to see the justice of God in difficult situations. And our uh, keep in mind, who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understand not things too wonderful, too wonderful for me, which I knew not. And that is from Job chapter 42, verse number three. You know, as we go through our lesson today, and we are studying Job. You know, we, 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 we've given an, an account, continuation. Uh, you know, last week we were studying Job, and Job had a friend who had come by, Bill Dad, and was sharing with him. We also uh, spoke about uh, Job's other two friends, uh, spoke about the meaning, gave their, their names, but not their uh, discussion with Job. But as we're looking with our lesson today, we're going to pick up again with, with a little bit of the study of Job for those that maybe did not get an opportunity to uh, review or to be a part of last week's lesson. We will bring up about Job again. But Job was an upright man. He was a man who was wealthy. He was a man who was known uh, in the land of Uz. As being known in the land of Uz, Job was wealthy. He had cattle. He had sheep. He had children. He also had servants. But with all of these things, Job, was being an upright man, was a man who uh, loved God. And then there was a meeting in heaven and Satan was among them, meaning that he was walking around, and God asked him what was he doing, or what he had been doing. He said he's been going to and fro, in and out of the earth, seeking whom he can devour. And then God asked him, have you considered my servant Job? God is, God is bragging on Job, because God knows more about us than we know about ourselves. And God knew that Job would be able to stand, hence why we have this book of Job, which allows us to be able to stand, to allow us to understand how God, when things are going on. We also understand that uh, Satan then said that Job does not serve you just for nothing. Job serves you because you've been blessing him. God then allowed uh, the evil one to come and touch all the things that Job had. And then in one day, while one servant was talking, telling him what happened to his cattle, what happened to his oxen, his sheep, and then also what happened to his children, where they all were gone and taken away from him. And Job said, the Lord God giveth, the Lord God taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then another meeting was called, and then Satan told, uh, told the Lord, told God, well, if you do skin for skin, meaning that, yes, you can take away other things, but if you touch somebody, oh, he'll cuss you to your face. But God knew just what would happen. God allowed Satan to be able to touch Job's body, but he could not kill Job. And Job was broke out with sores from the top of his head down to the soles of his feet. But then, and all of this suffering, all these things that are going on, Job did not 
cuss God. And But then Job did, as we're going to pick up with our lesson uh, continuing today, that Job was asking questions of God. He was asking questions. He just wanted to have a counsel with God to find out why these things were happening to him because Job's friends said that, Job, you must be living a life that has some kind of sin and evil in it because all these calamities would not occur unto you unless you were doing something, and God is punishing you. But Job knew that he had not done anything, and so Job, Job then uh, had asked for a counsel with God and been asking God for questions, and then once God came and started talking to him in chapter 38. God told him in chapter 38 to girdle his loins and so that he was going to talk to him. And then God started asking Job some questions. God asked Job questions about things that Job could not answer. Where, where were you, Job, when, I, when, when God measured the waters in the sea? Where were you when he, uh, when, when he measured the land? God asked all kinds of questions to Job that Job knew that he could not answer because when God asked him about the stars, the moon, all of these things that go on, Job could not answer any of those questions. And then Job realized that God is, Job, Job understood that with God being God, with God being God Almighty, with him being in God all by himself. He can do anything that he wants to do and that God loves us and that God and that God will not put more on us. And so Job then understanding these things, he then had to cover his mouth because he said, I shouldn't have asked those questions. I, I, I was way out of line. And so as we're picking up here with verse 42, Job is now after God had asked him uh, some 70-something questions, because some of them were 39, then another part of the book, uh, of the book it had like 20-something more questions. So he had asked him well over 70 questions that Job could not answer. Questions about, about the birth of animals. Where were you when the, do, where have you seen when the deer has its babies? Where were you when the eagle uh, is doing things? Where were you with the great, uh, the great animal, the behemoth that's out there? You know, all these things that Job could not answer because we as men, we as human beings, we do not have all of the answers, but God does and God sees. God, as Job understands, God even knows our thoughts. And so with God knowing, think about that, how powerful, how how mighty a God is that is able to keep all of the thoughts of all of the humans that's on the planet and to keep all of those things straight and then to be able to send us just what we need to bless us and to take care of us. So all of these things are greater and way more than any man can understand. And Job then realizing that, as I stated a moment ago, he covered his mouth. But as we're going to pick up with our lesson today, on and starting in chapter 42, Job is then going to uh, have some reply backs that lets him know, I mean, to let Job, Job is going to acknowledge himself and he is uh, acknowledging to God just where he, just where Job was a little bit off. And so now we're going to pick up and we're going to do chapter 42 of Job and we're going to do the first six verses of 42 and they read, then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholding from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understand not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee and I will speak. I will demand of thee and declare thou, art thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee, wherefore I abhorred myself and repent in dust and ashes. Job then is coming back and he's talking to God because once God had asked Job all of those questions, all of those things that Job could not answer and about the power and the might of God, Job then looks and Job answers, verse number one says, then Job answered the Lord and said, now when Job is answering the Lord and saying he's taking an account of himself, he's taking an account of where he stands, for he says, now I know that thou canst do, that thou canst do everything. Job then knows that God can do everything everything because when God starts sharing and letting us know what all he has done and what all he is doing, this acknowledges that God is doing everything. And so Job then acknowledges that. 
And then he says, and that no thought can be withholding from thee. There is no thought that man, there's no thought that anyone can have that God does not know. That lets us know about the supremacy of God, that he is all-knowing. He knows everything. So nothing goes past God. God knows the motives about everything that is done. No matter what someone says, God knows every lie that is being told, and God knows the purpose of why people are telling lies, and evil will not stand. Evil will not stand. So God knows when people set up and try to tell all kind of misdeeds on people and start doing things, God knows and they will be held accountable. And that is what Job is sharing here, that nothing, there's no thoughts that God does not know. And then when we look at verse number three, verse number three, Job says, who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? And this is what Job, Job was asking God for a counsel. Job was asking God for a discussion. Lord, oh God, I want to talk to you about how things are going with me. But then Job realizes that he has no knowledge to even be able to counsel with God. You cannot counsel and talk with God. God is too powerful. God is too mighty. God is too all-knowing. All the things that God knows and that God takes care of, no man can do. We cannot do those things we cannot handle it. So there's no way for us as human beings, as mortal, to even think that we're anywhere on the level of God because he is all-knowing and he is all-powerful. And the great thing about the all-knowing and all-powerful God is that our all-knowing and our power and all-powerful God is a God of love. Now see, think about man. If man gets a little bit of power, Man will be corrupted, will do all manners of evil because we talk about uh, absolute power and power, absolute power will absolutely corrupt people. People can start off kind, but then once they get more and more power, then they start to do more and more things that are not good. Hence why man, if we get any kind of power, we then will be, we, we start doing things not right. But God, who is all powerful, still does things in love for mankind. Job then talking here in verse number three. After Job has shared that he, who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge, Job then says, therefore have I uttered that I understand not. Job is telling us that he does not understand the things that God had asked Job. All of those questions Job could not answer, not a one of them. And so even though he had desired to counsel with God, he had desired to talk with God, he then realized by the questions that God asked, he certainly could not answer them. And so he said, I, 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 and Job then says, therefore have I uttered that I understand not. He said, and then Job continues on, things too wonderful for me. These things that God had asked him about, that God has been doing, how God sees the birth of deers out in the woods, how God sees what's going on up in the eagle's nest, how God knows what's going on with the behemoth and the Levithian. God knows all of these things, but man does not. God knows how deep the ocean is. God knows about all the things that are there at the ocean. Think about it here in 2022. We still are learning, you know, no matter the depths of the ocean, way down into the, all, as deep as the Pacific Ocean goes. All of those things that there, we say there's no way that there can be life down there. And as they descend, as man has been able to build some vessels that can descend down to the deeps, they then realize and see that there are animals down there. There's plant life down there that is able to live in that kind of pressure that the water is on them and also no kind of light getting down there, but they are still there. And God knows what's down there. So Job then continuing on and shares that, he, that, he, that these things are too wonderful for me, which I knew not. All the questions that God asked. Job couldn't answer. None of us could answer. But Job is realizing that God does and that God is all powerful. So when we then look at verse number four, Job is now listening and Job is now talking. And notice what he says here in verse number four. He says, hear, I beseech thee. He's asking God to hear, I beg you, and I will speak. I will demand of thee and declare. And when Job and when Job is looking and he's using th this word here, demand, Job is talking about that he questioned. And so Job is just saying that as he's looking and he is speaking and declaring unto thee, he says, I have heard of thee 
by the hearing of the ear. Job is taking into an account that he's begging God to hear him because Job says, Lord, I used to just hear, I used to just know about you with my ears. And we know our ears is one sense. But then now he is sharing with him, but now my eye see of thee. Job has a deeper understanding, has a better picture, has a better knowledge of God. He knew about God. He understood about God. But then when he had the opportunity, when God started talking with him, he got a better understanding of God. You know, when we have just one sense, which is the hearing in, in, this, in this account, then and, and if we are able to put on the ears, uh, have the ears where we hear, and then the eyes that we see, we get a better picture of the situation. Now, uh, what are you talking about, Stephen? <clears throat> As we can look and go back through history, history here being just the United States and the way things were maybe in the middle of the 20th century, which would be about 1940 through 1950, 1939, uh, 1955, somewhere in that area, radio was important. Radio had the programs that people could listen to. People would gather around the radio and they would use their ears to hear what is being broadcast. And the people would be having the things and they would talk about what's going on and they would share in these dramas. If someone had a gun, they would say, oh, what are you going to do with that gun? Uh, oh, look at the pretty this. But you could only hear it. But then the thing after the uh, middle part of, the, uh, of 1955, middle part of the, 50, of the 50s, television became uh, a thing. And so with television coming out, people could then not only hear, but they could see what's going on. And that brought a better picture to people as far as what they were looking at. So they were then able to use two senses. And what Job is sharing here, and I brought that up just so that we will have an understanding that if we hear something, that's one sense. But when we're able to hear and to see, that gives us a better picture. And what Job is saying here, not only was he able to hear, did he have a hear of God, but he had a, to see now because as a deeper understanding, has a better picture of God, he then has more knowledge and better understanding of God. And that is the same thing that hopefully that is the picture that I am trying to paint for us, that if we only have the hearing, but we have the hearing and the seeing, we have a better picture of a particular situation. And that is what Job was doing here. And then when we look at verse number six, verse number six says, Wherefore I abhorred myself, and this abhorred here means that he just despised himself. He, you know, when you look at something, he said, man, I just can't stand myself for what I have thought and for what I was questioning. You know, he was questioning God about what God had allowed to happen to him, but then now that he better understands all about God by not only hearing, but by seeing, he just despises himself. You know, it's just something that he's, he is ashamed of himself. I despise myself. And then not only does he despise himself for saying it, he then says that he repent, and he repent in dust and ashes. And that is to show that when we look at dust, dust is just the smallest thing the, the, uh, of the earth. It is just the dirt, the ground, the dust. He said, I repent in dust and ashes. I throw dust up in the air. I throw the ashes and the dust and the ashes. We know it comes from things that have been burned up. But Job is saying that he repents from that because he realizes that he was asking and questioning, but he was questioning God and he had no 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 right, no 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 way to that he should even be able to ask that because God is God. God can do anything that he wants to. He is the supreme. He is the one. He is the all-knowing God and he takes care of us and everything that God allows and that God does, God has the right to do because everything belongs to him. Amen. So Job then does that. And so Job places into the account of where he is and what is going on with him. So after that, and we in the middle part of the uh, 42nd chapter, you know, God then turned around and started, and God turned around and started blessing Job. But then the Job's three friends who came to him who did not provide any comfort to God because they were sharing things about God that was not true. And God then, uh, and God was the one who told Job that he would have to, for Job to, uh, for, those, for his friends to go to Job and for Job to earnestly pray for his friends. And as we look at that, you know, we can look at the latter part of verse number seven. 
when God was talking to uh, the, the Job's three friends, he then told them that for they, for ye have not spoken of me the things that is right as my servant Job has. Now notice that in verse number seven, they, the people who came to, to comfort Job and to tell Job and to tell Job that he had done wrong, that God knew that Job had been doing well, and but these friends, they spoke about God, but they said things, uh, spoke of God, the things that is not right. And so with us, with that saying, God then said, as my servant Job has. And God called Job his servant. Notice that now. God called Job his servant four times between verses 7 and 9, said he is my servant, meaning that Job, while he was suffering, while he was going through these things, he was God's servant because God knew that his servant would not fail him. God knew that his servant would be able to endure. God knew that his servant would make God be the one that God, remember, God bragged on Job. And Job was able to still endure so that the bragging that God did on Job came to be to fruition, meaning that it came to pass because God knew that Job would be able to stand. Hence why I share, God knows more about us than we know about ourselves because when we look at it and think about it, no one would think that they could be able to withstand the things that happened with Job. But God knew that Job would be able to withstand it. So, after that, God told, uh, told these men who came to him to go and get the seven bullocks and, and seven rams and then and go to Job, I mean, go to, uh, yes, go to Job and then uh, and sacrifice them and go to Job and ask Job to pray for you. Now, think about that. These are the ones who came there and told Job all the things that Job had done wrong, all the things that, that wasn't right, but Job would then be the one to pray for them. Isn't that something that we should always know that as we go and do things, you know, we got to treat people right because we want people who can get a prayer through to be able to pray for us. And so they had come to Job, share some things with Job, which was not right. But now they have to now Job has to pray for them. And it also shows us about Job's forgive, uh, forgiveness, because sometimes when people do us wrong, Sometimes when we think someone has done us wrong, we can hold a grudge. Now, you all know that there are people who can be mad at somebody for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. I hadn't liked them since we were in high school together. Is that true, great granddaddy? Yeah, that's right. I ain't, what are you mad at them about? I don't know, but it was something important back then. You know, but then as we look and think about this, Job was able to forgive. Job forgive, get, forgave his friends. His God then turned around and started blessing Job. And that's what we're going to pick up now with verse number 10. So as we uh, go through our lesson and, and pick up with our lesson today, we're going to continue. And I'm going to read the uh, verse 10, Job chapter 42, verse 10, and take verse 10 down through verse number 17. Verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all that had, that had been of his acquaintance before, and did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and every one an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than the beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she asses. He had also seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jemima. And the name of the second, Kazea, and the name of the third, Karen Hapak. Sorry about that, Karen Hapak. And in the land, and in all the land, there were no women found so fair as the daughters of of Job. And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this lived Job a hundred 
and 40 years and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. So Job died being old and full of days. Amen. So then as we look and as we're going through with verse number 10, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job where he prayed for his friends. Job, the, in the captivity here, is talking about the things that had, uh, that had occurred to Job, that, that, that calamity that had happened to him. God then turn, turned and changed that. He turned the captivity of Job and, and he prayed for his friends. Think about that. All the things that had occurred to Job. Remember, I was just sharing with us that Job had sores from the top of his head down to the bottom of his feet. All the things that had gone on, all the misery. Job just moaned because he was in so much pain and agony that had occurred, had fallen upon him. But when we look at verse 10, verse 10 says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. God can fix it, and he can fix it right now. It doesn't, God, can, God is in own time, is an instantaneous God. When God blesses, God can change it. And so we see here that God changed this just like that because he said God turned the captivity of Job. When he prayed for his friends, Job, while still being sick, Job, while still having the things going on with him, but God had blessed him, and, but God had told Job to go and make a sacrifice for his friends. Think about that. The friends are there. The friends are talking to Job, and they've been telling Job, Job, the reason that things are going on with you is because you have been falling short. You have been sinning. You have been doing some wrong in your life, and there you have it. But look at what is happening now. Those friends, God came and told them that they've got to give the seven bullocks, and they have to give the seven rams. And you give those seven bullocks and seven rams to Job, the one that is sitting here who is still in sores, the one who is sitting here still injured, the one who you have said has done some sinning and been doing some things, you've got to get this person that you've been saying sinning, you got to get them to pray for you, amen. And so Job then, so those friends had to go to Job and say, Job, you pray for us right now. You do this sacrifice for us because we have fallen short. We have done wrong. God has told us that we've done wrong. And so it says that what? Job had to do that. And then after Job had prayed for them, after Job had made the sacrifice for them, then God turned the captivity around. That's what verse number 10 tells us. Because it says, God, verse says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Job earnestly prayed for his friends. You know, we can be praying for somebody else and God can start blessing us. Amen. We can start doing some things for somebody else that's in a bad situation and then God can start blessing us. See, when we put some legs and some feet on those prayers, God can start blessing us. Amen. Every blessing ain't a financial blessing. Some blessings are peace of mind and things like that. So when Job started doing this, Job started, when Job started praying for his friends as God had commanded and as Job's heart was, God then started blessing. We continue with verse number 10. And also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Job was already wealthy, had previously been wealthy, but now when God starts blessing, it say not taken away, but when God comes back, God can do anything, but fail. God can twice as much, gives him twice as much as he had before because Job can handle it. If you recall a while ago, I was teaching and I said that, you know, sometimes some people can get some things and then they will fall away from God. But God knew what kind of character Job has. God knew that Job would have it, but it wouldn't change Job's relationship with God. It would not change the way that, that Job looked at God and had reverence for God. And so that's how we need to be. We should be able to own things and not let things own us. What do you mean by things own us? Sometimes some people can get some things and the next thing you know, they have fallen away from the church because they tried to get all the overtime. That was, that was the back in the old days, I guess, when people used to work hard all the time. How much overtime you're getting and all those things? But we now know about that. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Folks with jobs, more overtime. Why? Don't have time to do this. Don't have time to serve the Lord. But if you get some things, God is, what we're saying is that God knows who and how to bless. Amen. Verse 11. Then came there unto him 
all of his brothers and all of his sisters. This is now, Job has been sick, but now God is restoring the relationship. God is restoring the things. Whatever had people where they weren't coming around, they are now coming around. And his brethren and his sisters. And all that had been of his acquaintance before. Everybody that knew Job before, they are now coming back around Job and did eat bread with him in his house. They came and sat down with Job to eat bread, and they bemoaned him and comforted him and all uh, comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. We know where the evil came from, don't we? Amen. All right. Every man also gave him a piece of money and every one an earring of gold. We know that the piece of money here is talking about like gave him some silver. So Job, everybody came around and they blessed Job. You know, God can make your enemies feed you. Amen. See, God, when God starts blessing, people will start having charity in their heart to give things because God touches the heart. And when we move on what God has laid on our hearts, we will get blessings for that also. Amen. You know, We've oftentimes heard that a closed fist, a tight fist, can't let nothing out and it can't let nothing in. Amen. So when we freely give, God will freely give back to us. Amen. All right. Now, verse number 12. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, saying that God had blessed him more in the end than he did in the beginning. And he said, for he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, and 1,000 yokes, and 1,000 she donkeys. He gave him all of these things that he had before, but gave it to him in twice the abundance. That lets us know that the, that, that the earth and the, the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The Lord owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and a thousand hills also belong to God too. Amen. And so God blesses how and whom he decides and how he, uh, God blesses whom he desires to bless. We then look at verse number 13. Verse number 13 said, he had also seven sons and three daughters. God blessed him with the same number of children that he had before. God has blessed him. He lost those other ten, but now God is blessing him again with ten more children. And then as we look at these ten children, it says now first, and it goes to talk about the daughters. It talks about the daughters that he had. So when we look at verse number 14, and he called the name of the first, we're talking about the first daughter. The first daughter's name is Jemima. And, and and, then the, and we know that now, we understand that, that, that Jemima here was, uh, <coughs> pardon me, J Jemima is a name, and it, and it was talking about uh, a fragrance for her. Uh, I, believe that that, I believe that that's what Jemima was, was a fragrance. But it was a positive thing uh, for, for Jemima, and because uh, verse 14 teaches us that this was uh, handsome, uh, and, and talks about her being handsome. Uh, uh, yes, amen, quit stuttering, Steve, we'll stop by that about her being handsome. And then the next daughter here is, uh, is, is, is Kiza, K Kazea. And with Kazea, that, that's her, and, she, uh, and her name also had uh, a, a meaning. And then the name of the third daughter here is Karen Hypuk. All of these names here, these names were symbolic, and these names uh, meant some things uh, uh, about beauty. And so then verse 15 shares with us, and in all the land, there were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. Meaning that of all the land, Job had three beautiful daughters. And then as it goes to say, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. Historically, if uh, the people would leave inheritance to the daughters if they did not have a son. But here, Job has so much and God has blessed him that Job is then giving his daughters and inheritance. And so he did that. And verse 14, verse 16 then goes and shares with us, after this lived Job 140 years. Job lived 140 years after all of the calamity that had occurred. And think about that. He was, and, 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 as if, and, and after living 140 years after all of that calamities, Job was able to see his sons, these, these, these seven sons, and then, and see his son's sons, even four generations that, that Job is able to be a part of, are able to see four generations there, that God had blessed him with a long life. Well, verse 17 says, 
So Job died being old and full of days. Job died. Job went on after seeing all these things that Job, Job passed away. He died being old and full of days. So God blessed him that, it, that, the, that his latter days were, were better than his beginning days because Job was able to endure that God knew that Job would be able to endure, that God was able to be able to call Job his servant and called him his servant four times in the last book of the book of Job to let us know that all the things that had gone on, Job still, God was still able and God was still willing to say that Job is my servant and to say it more than once, but to say it four times that he is his servant. And that is what we should be desiring to do is to be a servant for God. Hence why the title of our lesson today is serving a just God. Now that is a question for us today. Are we servants for God? Will God be proud of us? Will God be able to brag on us? Will God call us our, his good servant? Will God be able to call us his servant? And that is an internal question. That is a question that we must answer for ourselves. And the way that we can become God's servant is for us to uh, have faith in God, for us to believe and trust God, for us, for if we do not know God in the pardon of, of our sin, for us to trust him enough to step out on faith that we believe that he sent his darling son, Jesus Christ, into the world to die for us, to pay a ransom for us, a ransom that none of us could pay. When we think about paying that ransom for us, that ransom of that, that payment that we all owe of death, because the way of sin. Sin pays off in death. We understand that that when because we have sinned, we got to die. But Jesus has died for us. Will we accept God's plan of salvation? Will we accept God's plan that Jesus has died for us? And will we accept God's plan not only that Jesus died for us, that God raised him from the dead and that he is our kinsman redeemer. He lives alive, he, he is alive and sitting on the right hand side of God the Father. If we believe that, if we utter that, if we say that with our mouth, if we believe it in our heart, the scripture teaches us that we shall be saved. So if you do not know God, God in the pardon of your sin, won't you believe? Won't you step out? Won't you trust God? Won't you step out and trust God? Because he is a loving God, a merciful God. He stands at the door and knocks. And won't you let him into your hearts? May we pray. Our Father in heaven, God, we thank you. God, we thank you for being God all by yourself. Lord, thank you for loving us so much that, Lord, you sent your darling son, Jesus Christ, into the world to pay a ransom for us. God, thank you so much for loving us so that, Lord, you gave us an example here through the book of Job of the things that go on in life and for us to hold on to your unchanging hand. God, we know that you love us. We know that you care all about us. For, Lord, when we look at the book of Job and start the studying and the understanding and knowing all the things that you were able to, to share with Job, all the questions that you were able to answer and to ask, ask Job about. God, we know that you do and take care of those things. So God, that's a big God. And God, we serve you and God, we love you. And God, we ask a special blessing again on those sick among us that you will touch them and heal them and enable them to be able to come out to the house of prayer one more time, that you'll be able to get them off of their beds of affliction. And Lord, we ask a special blessing on, on our loved ones, on, on the families of loved ones who have lost people. God, you know everything. For God, as you move in, God, as we are humans, God, it hurts. But, God, we know that you love us. And so, God, we just ask a special blessing of comfort. Lord, that you heal all broken hearts, that you mend and send the comforter as only you can. And, God, we'll be careful to give you all the honor and all the praise. In your son, Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. We also want to remind everyone that uh, on next Sunday, next Sunday, which will be the first Sunday in March, we will open the doors back and we will start worshiping together again. Amen. For uh, we now have another downturn in the virus and we're asking everyone to, uh, to please plan to come out and worship with us on the first Sunday uh, in March. We will still be doing the uh, social distancing and things like that, but just want to be able to get back into the building and see some of your smiling faces. And we thank you again and we ask that God to richly bless you is our prayer. Thank you. Amen.